sometimes like your mind's like there is no way that I can get out of this dark room you know like sometimes you think like no like now it's done like now it's impossible the things are true like it's too mass you know like too many things happen in your head yeah. and that you can like understand like what is happening you know like but in the end of the day like you you're gonna pass through that is no matter what happens you're gonna pass through you know like things sometimes suck sometimes like this with your with your personal life sometimes in a job sometimes whatever you want to 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 put as example you can use on this case but it's gonna pass the 31 vision podcast so for those of you that are first time viewers 31 vision podcast is for parents or athletes that uh, are interested in going to college and what the process about it is and we bring guests that were former or current athletes to tell their story so you can pick and pluck good things and bad things to learn from and then also we all we, we cover career choices you can have after high school or after college that can be directly related to sports too so without further ado why don't you introduce yourself brother Thank you so much for inviting me. So my name is Rodrigo da Costa. I'm from Brazil. Brazil. I'm currently a FC Tosa player, a professional team that plays USL League, USL Championship League. That is supposed to be like the second division of the mm -hmm. US. And yeah, now I'm here on off season, getting ready to go back for the season. Nice man. So let's start. Let's start with uh. Where it all began, man. So, are you from Brazil? Born and raised? Born and raised from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. Oh, okay. And yeah, it was it was great there. Like, my dad and my mom was a teacher. Okay. My dad was a professional soccer player. Nice. Back in the days, and then he become a cop. Okay. My mom, uh, my great so the soccer runs it's in the, the family. blood, huh? <laughs> my grandfather was a soccer player. A professional soccer player, but nice. also back in the days was different. So like yeah. professional, but like back the stories that they tell me is that like they nobody like it. You yeah. know, soccer back in the days was like, oh, why you play soccer? Like right for what? Go, is to, it? go to study. Or go like you know, you need to go to school. Like it was not like cool. Yeah. You know. So my great my grandfather was also a professional soccer player. So nice, a pioneer, man. <laughs> That's cool. Keep going. Yeah, man. <laughs> So did you ever feel pressure to play soccer or was your dad like, if you like it, do it? Or is it more like you're going to try soccer? <laughs> yeah, I would, like, I would like to say it was not pressure, yeah. but definitely like I knew I would make him proud yeah. if I was playing soccer. You know? yeah, like, yeah. So we had definitely had some discussions about it. Like mm -hmm. it was hard. It was hard. Sometimes it's hard, you know, like not because like, of course, he was not like, I'm I'm not comparing, but like let's say as the son of Cristiano Ronaldo, mm -hmm. being his son must be really hard because everybody right. also gonna compare him to you right. know to Cristiano Ronaldo. So you need to also do you know. Yep. So it was not like that, but was a pressure of like you know like will you, you measure up to your pops? Yeah. yeah. Or not not even measure up like but to play soccer, you know, yeah. like it was never like a like a second. I also never give my my myself a second like chance a second sport to play you know like gotcha. i was i was good like in school in every single sport but like soccer was my yeah, life yeah, yeah it was yeah. you know you like it's your you first have, love like, yeah it's my love so yeah. like i i love soccer like i like i was we're talking here about football like i right. learned when i came to the us but i love every single sport but like love like the passion is mm -hmm. different you know like and the passion mm -hmm. goes for soccer always like Always. It's a beautiful sport, man. I started liking it a little too late. I, I started liking it like in my mid-20s. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have played soccer when I was younger, man. It's a really beautiful sport, man. I love I really do enjoy watching it and playing it. I'm not as, nowhere near as good as you, but I enjoy <laughs> playing it. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. And the, the best part we say, like, it's the outside, you know, like, mm -hmm. when we get together for pickup games and, like, when you're outside sitting down, talk with your friends, like, yeah, you man. know, just having fun, like, chilling. It's like, it's the best part. It is, Definitely. Bro. So, uh, So, you're playing soccer, right? You're getting older. Did your dad put you in academies or was he like your personal yeah. coach? Or? No, like, so what happened? He was working at this time. Like mm -hmm. we came from like a, a 
uh, how can I say, like, it, because in Brazil it's kind of different, but like, let's say in a middle class, we are really low in the middle class. My mom and my dad was struggling a lot, you know, like mm. working. My mom had like two jobs and stuff. Like, so it was like, a, we came, me and my brothers went to public schools and stuff. Mm. So it was like, uh, not tough because my mom never, nowadays I had talks with my mom mm. that like, she shares with me how, what was happening at the time. You know, you like, had no idea, huh? But my mom was good share, like not, you know, like we didn't know what was happening, like mm -hmm. that we didn't have the money, like you know, like all, never food was always on the table. But my mom was struggling, working, like mm -hmm. you know, always like doing all that she could, like me, her, and my dad. You know, that's so, a good mama. Yeah, that was perfect. So like, we never struggled, but it was definitely like we didn't have whatever we we want. You know, like so mm -hmm. was, but it was a nice childhood, like. uh when I was about like the first memories that I have was like five, six futsal and was already like tournaments, you know, like. Yeah. And, and what's futsal for people that don't know about soccer? It's like, it's not core, you mm -hmm. know, it's like five yeah. v five. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's not like the grass, it's like core, you yeah. know, like vo the volleyball core is the same like material. And it's like, it's futsal, it's five v five. Is that where the sauce came with the feet? You know, that's having to- where, having That's to... where a lot of people say that Brazilians get like the technique mm -hmm. and like the, the quick think because it's short, it's a small space. You're always with pressure on you and you need to think quick. Like you get like, it's not that much about your tech. You also like, you learn a lot of technique and a lot of different like skills, mm -hmm. but the like thinking makes you think really quick. So yeah. once you get, you expand and you get more space, you are getting like, you mm -hmm. have more time and more time, but you don't need all of the time because you are used to think when so it's, when fast. it's so small. Yeah. yeah, when it's so small, you need to think so fast that when you go to like a field, a grass mm -hmm. field, like you have a lot of more space. For me, I have a lot of space. For yeah. other players that I use just to play on the sock, on the field, you know, on the grass. They can feel fast for them. They, they, they are like, oh my God, he's, because we are used to think, you know, like, but yeah, the first memories that I have was like five, six, I already like playing, you know, like I already futsal and like was by my, by my house, like a club that we used to go. And we used to practice like three times a week and games on the weekend. Yeah, something I've seen, because uh, I work for FBS, for uh -huh. Francis's uh, stuff. Shout out to FBS. Um, the coaches, one of the things that they focus on the most with the younger kids is that, like passing the ball quickly, like not, not holding onto it too long. So how they do that is they shrink the size of the court yes. or the size of the field. And that makes the kids forced to make quick decisions. So then like, like you just said, you hit it right on the head. When they open up, they look more calm. They don't feel as pressured from someone running up on them because they're used to it being clustered, yes. you know? So that's that's a good drill. Like start really small mm -hmm. and then you expand, you expand, expand. And you, just for your head to see like, now I have more time. Yeah. But sometimes you're not going to have this time. So if you learn how to think quick right. and take good decisions, you're going to start to like, of course, in the beginning, you're going to take bad decisions. Bad right. decisions are going to look ugly. Mm -hmm. But once you start to get it, the decision is going to like come quick and quick and better and better and better. And then from now on, it's going to only like, you know, it's just going to improve. Nice, nice. Yeah, you just you just dropped a gem right there for the <laughs> coaches. So, all right. So, is there any stories you remember specifically of soccer? So, you, you're playing futsal. Um, you, when do you start playing on grass? Like, is so there I made my transition to futsal to the academy where my dad played professional. Is Botafogo? Is one of like like a big club in Brazil? Mm -hmm. And I made my transition when I was about 10, 11. Okay, you know, like me and another friend that used to play futsal on the same team. We we went to this like trial and stuff, and we stayed there in the academy for like. For was, that, good, was that your first time away from home? No, it oh, okay. was close. Was oh, close. Oh, right yeah, it was all in Rio de Janeiro. Like, oh, nice. I okay. had to t take a train about like 30, 40 minutes. Okay, and was was actually because we used to live close to a train station, mm -hmm. and then we used to get this train. Me and my friend, and his mom used to take us back at that time. She she didn't work only her his dad. Mm -hmm. So she used to take us to practice and stuff. Nice, and came in clutch. Yeah, so that was, was nice, it was a good time. So yeah, that was when like I started transition to the grass like at 10, 11. And once you got to that academy, um, do you, in your opinion, like were you already super athletic and then you just needed a little bit of molding or were you very raw and then they molded you into like the next level of your game? I was never really athletic, athletic with my like, I was always tall for mm -hmm. my age, but it was not really like, I had like good like coordination stuff, mm -hmm. 
but I feel like I was too tall for my age. Okay. So maybe I was you look clumsy really, getting used to your height. Maybe I was too cl- yeah. <laughs> so and that's how, and I was a defender back at the time. Okay. So it was easier for me because I was a defender. So I used to take more advantage of my body, you know. But I was not as strong. I was always like, you know, like more because I was like, yeah, yeah, like it, but I was bigger than the other guys, you know. So was like I was a defender back at the time and was 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 good because I I had like a good understanding because of the defenders normally stay on the back. They have like a good they learn how the vision, you know, like mm-hmm. what is about to happen there, like. I need always to be aware, like we have the ball, but like, is that something's gonna happen there that I already need to cover somebody? I need to like, you learn a lot about the game, you know, you see how the game, like, how like we organize the tactics and stuff. Like, so that was a good transition for me, you know, but it was hard because my mom, like I told you, she was a teacher mm. and she had a second job. So for her, the like the, the academic part was the most important. Yeah, and my mom my, too. And for my dad, not that he didn't, <laughs> he didn't me like he didn't like he cares about of course yeah. because he also played until he was like 26 27 then he had to transition back at that time soccer was not people professionally didn't make it that much more, like it was not yeah. it was more much, for the love of the game yeah, yeah you know so he like my school was like i told you it was a public school but it was a good public school and i had to like you know, to really start focus. to focus. So, and sometimes you used to stay in the afternoon. And sometimes I used to miss like some school to go to practice. Sometimes I used to miss practice to, to stay in school. So on both sides so were unhappy. Was, so mom is yeah. like, nah, 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 what's going on with soccer? You know, <laughs> so sometimes like my dad, no, no, no go to, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna talk to her. And sometimes I used to miss practice to go to school. So like a good balance though. So I was <laughs> trying to keep the balance, <laughs> you know? So yeah, that was the, the a tough time because I was like, when you're in an academy like that, like you cannot really miss practice, you know, like it's yeah, I'm not. I'm sure that's unacceptable. A yeah. friend that I, this guy that like, he went all the way to professional yeah. in this club that is really big club, like was a good like achievement for him. And yeah. unfortunately life, like one year he was in the professional, he like, he turned his ACL mm. and he never played again. He stayed Ugh, like another I three, four stories. years trying to go back. But after one year, not in being like being the like you know just on the side practicing alone, and then yeah. they put him in the B team, and then he never got back. And today, like he took another path, you know, he took another career, and he yeah. he retired from soccer, but he went all the way. That I maybe I could too, but like my was never like you know I was missing a lot of practice and stuff. And school was I was in a hard school, so I had to really focus and stuff. So in the in the beginning, it was really hard, like to keep both a good balance, you know? That sure. was the tougher part for me, like to keep a good balance because in a big academy like that, you can, like my, this friend that I was telling you, he dropped school. When well, he, he completely was, just dropped out. He's like, he I'm going to focus on soccer. When he was like, we are 12, 13. Oh, he's like, yeah, that's it. Because he also had like a really, he was from my neighbor and he like, his dad was like a, a bus driver and his mom was like a, a state, on mom, you mm-hmm. know, so it was a, also a really difficult childhood for him. And he he thought like he'd have a good opportunity to take, to change his family. Like, yeah, you know, like I get it. that's a, a, a dream, like to yeah. make it. And then we can change, our, you know, like not just us, but like our family, you know, yeah. like everybody. So that was his dream. And like, I mean, he made some, you know, like he made some, some money. He was helping, at least to help his family. And but yeah, like he had to drop. Like it is that tough. Sucks. It is dro- it is tough, and it's, it's part of the game. Man, it's part of the game. Like that, you need to take decisions. And unfortunately, sometimes you are not old enough to take these decisions. You know, sometimes you're too like too young to like decide. You know, like I have a f- now on FC Tosa. The, uh, this guy from Brazil also. He's his name is Marlon. Now he's playing Rujero. So he was here with me for like two years on Tosa, and. He he went to he also dropped school and he went to live on the academy when he was 12, 13. Wow. So imagine like he, he, you need to take the decision to like I'm gonna That's leave a really my family. Big decision, yeah, man. When you're twelve or thirteen, Shh. I'm gonna leave my family behind, but I'm gonna and only on the Chase weekends. Chase my dream. And just like sometimes on the weekends, because in the weekends you have like the games. Mm-hmm. So yeah. sometimes on the weekends I'm gonna be able to see my mom and my dad. But the same like I'm gonna catch the dream because like. He also was like in a, in a 
difficult situation when he was young and he's like, I'm going to change my family's like, you know? Yeah. And that's part of I where mean, the passion comes from, you know, where know, that, that drive, yeah. you know? Of course, he didn't like, oh my God, like, but he's still there. He's young. He's 25. He's still like, and now he's playing first division in Israel. He's doing good. His cousin, the same. And his cousin now is like a really top, top player in Brazil. You nice. know, like he stayed a little bit behind, but it's still like he, he made it and like yeah, man, could be having a, a journey in the sport you love, you know, you know, like could be, a, I could be telling you a bad example here. Like, oh, he made a ton of other guys made the same decision, dropped from school and decide to go and then get professional. Mm -hmm. Then make, make nothing. And after that, you need to, you know, like you're going to. The real life starts. Real life starts. And like, what am I going to do? Like, yeah. I don't have like a degree. I don't have like the minimum. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have the minimum. Like, on math or like on Question, Portuguese in, in in the states, let's say I drop out in high school from that's from fifteen to seventeen years old. If I drop out, I can get my GED. In Brazil, is there something similar to that where yeah, you just like that is drop something out? that you can go? It's like a private place that you can go. You pay and you do all of the tests, all of the things gotcha. for you to get it there. But like, gotcha. but honestly, like I'm gonna get there. But like the kind of work that I'm gonna be able to do. I don't need that yeah. because I'm going to work on construction. I'm going to work. I'm going to do the things. I'm going to open my own business. I'm gonna, yeah. You need to like start to like work on your, but it's something that you don't need to show your GED. Gotcha. To, you know what I mean? Gotcha, it's gotcha. like all of the jobs that you can get it, yeah. but because of, because you won, not yeah. because you have a, a high school diploma, you know? Gotcha. And because in Brazil, like it's hard, like the opportunity is really hard. You know, so it makes it even more difficult for you to find something, you know. So you're becoming a teenager now. So where where where's your mindset at? So when as a teenage something really hard happened and now like I'm it's easier for me to talk because mm -hmm. I did like a lot of like I did like three years of ter of like uh we say therapy, therapy yeah, but it's therapy, but like we say so, Psychology, Psycho Psycho psychologist. Psych yeah, uh -huh. we say psicologue. That's the name in, in, oh, in, Port in Portuguese. Portuguese yeah, so yeah. it's like a therapy because yeah. when I was fourteen, my dad passed away, and it was like oh, in a really hard situation. We are like, like I told you, he was a cop, and something mm. so happened that we don't need to go through. But like, and we are on the on the on the we are together, you know. Mm. Like, and me and my mom, we saw and like was like a really tough like Can time, imagine. you know, yeah. like was uh, now I'm good to talk because after like so long, like I was 14 now, like I'm 29, but like, and also a lot of like, you know, took time for, yeah. I would not in the first like five years, I would not be able to talk at all. Like that's understandable. I would yeah, cry yeah. and like, that's it. Like I was not able to talk. And like, even nowadays, like now learning a lot, like with a lot of like the internet helps us a lot with like information stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. So I learned that like, because some things that happened on, when I was a teenage, that also brought to me like where I'm now. You yeah, know, it like, molded you into Mold me yeah. to like, oh, yeah. mold me like how hard I work for me stuff, but also like all my like, all my feelings and stuff, how hard it is to share, you know, like even yeah. with my wife, sometimes I need to sit down with her. Like, I really need to tell you that now because like it's, I hold for too much, you know, like yeah. sometimes we sit down, we have a good conversation, we cry, and then I take it out and then we can go to the next phase. Yeah, letting it build you up know? is never good. Yeah, yeah, but I it's agree. hard for me, because, but now I know that and I right. learned because I learned that all the way there when I was young, you know? So when that happened, like, I was like, I'm done. I'm yeah. not like, you know, like I was already out of the academy back at the time. I was, they already, because I was missing a lot of practice and stuff. They cut me out. And I was practicing another place and I was like, ah, that I didn't like too much and stuff. I was close to my house, but was not what I really want. Like that really like academy, a really like good level, a good like, you know, push. Yeah. So I was already like uh, feeling that happened and I dropped like completely. Yeah, you lost and interest just, and you were just- I lost interest. I was like, no, that's not for me. Like. I'm just gonna Yeah, when when someone's grieving, like you're in a different headspace, man. Like you're not your well, personality's like, not the same. You, you know, might see like, like a little fraction of it. Yeah. But you're kinda like, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone grieves differently. But like when you grieve, you're kinda like in a cloud. You know, like you're kinda like you're you're going through the motions, like saying hi and bye, but like no one's upstairs. 
Like you're just kind of like in a fog and it's. And the only you know, you know, is high. Like, right. And when you're young, like. You're supposed to just continue your life like if nothing happened, but like you lost like so you go many back love to school, so dearly. Bro, it was so hard to go back to school. Like, oh as my God. Nothing, think like being three weeks away. For mm -hmm. example, after that happened, I was three weeks away and stuff. I don't even remember how long it was, but it was a good time yeah. away of school and stuff. And you go back and you need to like, to act, you know, like, like it's it everything normal. Mm -hmm. Like, and at that age, also my friends, also my best friends knew, but I'm sure they didn't know how to, how to, to act me, around you. To act to me, yeah. I was just say, hey, Hudrick, like, sorry for what happened, stuff. Like, yeah. at that, now I know how to, like, if something happened to you, I'm going to go to you and, bro, like, whatever you need, like, let me know, please. And stuff. Yeah. We know how to act next to each other because we learn. But when I was this age, like, You're I was there acting, out. everything was fine, like, laughing and stuff. And they are there, like, the same. But I'm sure they're feeling the same. Like, is Hudrick fine? Like, is that, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. it's hard. It's a really hard situation. Like, and I, like I said, like, when you're young, it's hard, bro. You don't really know if like you are taking the right decisions. You always like, you know, you double yourself. Like, you're yeah. okay. am I going the right way? Like, so, so what was your mindset on soccer? Was it like a sore subject because obviously it's your pops, or was it something you wanted to play for him? So, how, how were you feeling at the time? At that time, I was like, no, it's done. Like, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want anymore. Like, it's too hard. Like, what got you back I, into it? I was like, so I was. That doesn't mean I stopped to play. Doesn't mean I stopped to love soccer and the oh, passion. Okay. And I used to live really close to the stadium where my in 2007 my team built a stadium nice. right next to my to my house. Wow. I would say like meant to be ten minutes walking, you know. So nice. I used to go every single game, like every single game. I used to know somebody there, but like my my dad used to be really involved in, on the on the club and stuff. Mm. So I had the, he had this friend that played with him that it's like. It, even nowadays, he's the top five goal scorer of nice. my team. Nice. You know, so he's a really important guy and he used to give me tickets. He's a, and before that, I used to go to the stadium like every single week. What with an my experience, dad. huh? With my dad, I used to go every single week. My dad, I was 10 years old. I used to like to Sunday, go down and play mm -hmm. soccer on the playground and stuff on the street. And my dad said, Rodrigo, come home. We are going to watch two teams, bro. Like <laughs> terrible teams, like <laughs> third division yeah. of like, like 90 degrees outside <laughs> 3 p.m oh. i wanted to be outside play for my friends i used to go with him watch the games like 600 people on the stand like, <laughs> so baking bacon over there like young like couldn't <laughs> even see the other side of the field because i was on the same level terrible but he put that on me you know that passion yeah. you know like and then for, i start to like like and then I was like, Dad, do we have any game today right. this weekend? Are you going to play like to watch? Yeah. Are you going? You know what I mean? So we used to go to watch a lot of my my sister. Her husband used to also play too. So we used to wa go to watch him and stuff. So it was like I really like I had really good times with him and was always in the stadium. You know, like was always going to the stadium. Like that's the, my best memories. Nice. For that time, because also like when everything happened, you kind of lose a little bit the things, you know, like you kind of like yeah. my, sometimes I, I try to stop and think like some stuff, but I don't really remember, you know, like, I mean, but these memories never let, leave my, my. Yeah, they're very vivid. Yeah. yeah. They're really like, I, I can see right now, if I close my eyes, I can see like. That's everything. awesome, man. Never lose that, bro. Yeah. For sure, bro. That's a, that's an awesome memory right there. So, all right. So. You're going to the games, you go through this tragedy, you're going through the self-development, you know, trying to grow out of like a tough, a tough time. Uh, did you finish school and then go back to soccer or did they both kind of happen at the same time? No, so I was, I was, fin I, I, I stopped computer soccer. I was just doing school and stuff. Mm -hmm. So after when I was like 16, 17, I move, we move because it was like by my house that happened and stuff. So mm -hmm. Was and you've seen, for, yeah. you've seen yeah it was like in front of where you used to live and stuff yeah. and passing that was hard for, it is, yeah. for my mom for everybody you know so we leave and we move and i start like i was always, always playing but just pick up games for fun yeah, with and the way i move was like um a playground in front of my house you know where the community used to have like a really nice place on the street that everybody used to come to play. You know, it was like a really like kind of park, you know, in, in Brazil, mm -hmm. we don't have like 
It's kind of like parks. basketball courts in the United States, yes. right? Everyone comes together. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's it. That's the perfect <laughs> example. Like two courts and everybody used to come together and like, you know, play. Go at it. So I used to play, 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 play. And I also used to, we used to have like a beat soccer court where I start to get more involved with beat soccer, with playing full volley, all of the nice. things that I, I love, it, you know? So I was really like always playing, 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 playing. And I I never thought like, oh, I'm going to, I want to go back or stuff like that. You just loved it. For me, it was like a lot past of that, you know, like it was already done. So, and I was playing, playing like friends used to get together to play tournaments. And I stayed, to, I started to play like seven v seven tournaments on, on this like, like turf grass, like mm -hmm. the smaller, not like 11 v 11 or seven v seven. Mm -hmm. And I started to play these games, tournaments and stuff. And this guy, that was 2014, his name is Amari. He's still my agent nowadays. He saw me playing and like he saw also like I was all, all happened really like it's God. Like there is no yeah. other like thing. So you know, Amari like, just stumbled onto walking. No, listen, I was start to see, I was one day scrolling on Facebook and this friend posted that he was in a, on a degree, like an, when you get a degree, how it's the name, like a graduation. Mm -hmm. I graduated with his brother in California. And his brother came to a college over here to play soccer and got his degree. Okay. And I was like, all right. And he was getting through like one account, one like over there we call like companies, mm -hmm. agencies that do that. And he was posting pictures and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, that's cool. Like he's going to like the US to play soccer and stuff. Like that's yeah. nice and gonna get education. You know? So, and at that time I was like 20 already. I was mm -hmm. going to college already in Brazil. And I was like, that's cool, bro. Like, that's really nice. So I started to follow him and stuff. Like I, I asked him, hey, what's, what's going what's on? All about, yeah. What's all about? Like, it's like, <laughs> how, do you, how do I get involved and stuff? So he said, like, he told him the name of the agents. No, just call this guy. He's going to help you and stuff. So when I was going through this, like getting these first information to let my mom know, the guy, like I saw that was like, that's like 12,000 reels. You know, mm -hmm. something like out of like yeah. way out of my price my, range. my price range or whatever I could do to for them to like do everything like because there is a lot of documents that you need to get like your highlights. Yeah, you're moving countries, things, man. <laughs> you're, you know, like a lot of things that sorry, a lot of things that you need to do for you to be able to for them to show you to coaches and then the coaches from the US to recruit you. You gotcha. know, so. I was like, no, but that's way. I, I always did wonder how that process went. Cause I'll see uh, someone international yeah. in college. I'm like, how did this happen? So that's you it. Know? So that's it. Okay. They're like, they have agencies. Mm -hmm. They have like, some agents are bigger than others. Some ones, some agents just got the end part. That is like, mm -hmm. you have your own highlight already. Mm -hmm. I, or you have been playing in academies and I know you like, and you get like all your, you need to translate every single document from school. Mm -hmm. Like everything, everything that requires the college over here for you to move. And that is like a English test that you need to do gotcha. that for you like to qualify, you know, like, oh, he has enough English or he has, you know, gotcha. that is like, a, if That's you go a requirement. to, yeah, a requirement. And if you go to like a division one, for example, it's even more requirements, you know, okay. you need to have like uh, SAT, you need to ACT, have like different, yeah. you know, requirements. Gotcha. So but my level of English was like nothing, yeah. you know? And I was looking around and that guy told me this price. I was like, already, uh, I was feeling down. I don't know. And then <laughs> I met Amari, this guy that saw me play and he was like, like, you really, like you could go and stuff. Like, you know, like you, you, you're good. So I was like, oh, okay. So he invited me to go practice. So his agents have like three times a week practice and it was close to my college. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start to go there before. I was working already, like doing other things. So I'm gonna, after work, before going to co to college, I'm gonna pass by to see how it is. So I started to see and stuff. They also had like English classes. That was not the best one, but it was like, was a good like start. Hey, you get know? you started, yeah. Whatever. Get you start. So I went and I told my mom, look mom. Did you find English easy or hard? No, hard, man. <laughs> it was terrible. I always try, I always try. My mom, like I told yeah. you, academic, like- Your English is good now, man. Really important. Yeah. You know, so for her it was really important. She always like tried to save as much to put me in course and stuff, but like 
it was enough. Studying was like, I, I mean, like I'm good, like with some parts, like with math, with numbers, I'm better. Mm -hmm. But like for me, it was really hard to focus, yeah. you know, to fuck, to stop and like do it. That, like it was really hard. So I was never good in English. And like I had like a really, like my brother was really good. My brother always like was the, the other side. My brother and my <laughs> sister was the other side, like really good in everything. Like so on the academic part. So that's it. Like he said, like, I really think you have a shot to go. And like, if you like stop and do it, like, you know, the process. You gotta learn English. That's it. It's the process. You know, if yeah. you take like six months, I think you, you can go, you can do it. And I told my mom, once I told my mom, my mom was like, you definitely do it. And you like, would come in as a freshman or, yeah. or according to how many credits you had in college already? So, because I, that's why I went to a NIA, you know. Ah, uh, NIA, yeah. Requires, like the requires a last, like, it's less problem, you know, mm -hmm. like it's yeah. like, it's like, it's not a part of the NCAA, so you can, yeah, overgo other rules and yeah, stuff, different rules. Yeah, different rules, you know, yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. I was in the first year of my college and stuff, but even though I was able to be, I was eligible mm -hmm. the four years for the NA. That's awesome. You know, so I was like, all right, so I start everything, my, and my mom, because what happened, she was, I was in that age to going out and stuff, like coming back home late. So yeah. she was afraid, like, because Rio de Janeiro was really, it is violent and yeah. because what we passed through was even worse for us. So like we said, like, you, she said, no, you're going to go. Like no matter what we need to do, you're going to go. And she was doing better at the time already. Yeah. We are getting like the pension for my dad. Mm. Like uh, that's how you say a pension, pension. Yep. a pension yep. and stuff. So she was doing much better and stuff. We are doing much, be much, much better. So she was like, you know, no, I want you to go. I like because go. she wants me to take it out of that situation that she yeah. was afraid you know that something could happen it's a me. big fear it's the biggest it's fear. A big fear you know like yeah. and my brother was already out in another state at that time my brother's uh when my brother was 15 he passed through a military course and he went to another state okay. you know he's a pilot now for the military my brother was always Very really cool. smart so when he was 15 so you had to home. so you had to think about leaving for soccer and he left for military yeah. and he Damn. was we are 10 years of difference yeah. i was like a miracle my mom had already like a we call uh, it c-section no a d i u d l y something uh, like which, that which is that? it's right. like a something that you is you don't it's not a surgery you just put it to close but sometimes gotcha when like it was like already almost 10 years that she put it and went through and she, Fertilize and stuff, and then yeah. and oh, no. I, oh wait, like to, to not get pregnant anymore. Get pregnant. You, to not get like, pregnant like tubes anymore. Tied, get your tubes but tied, she and then do, get the tubes tied. It's like a, a little a different thing one that you put. It's not that like got, uh, uh, surgery. It's not surgery. It's a, it. something like more simple and cheap. Yeah. You know, like that you just put mm -hmm. it. But that and is you like were still a, born. But that is a validation for that. I yeah. think it's ten years or something like that, and I still born. You know, like so my, my difference for my brothers, my sister, I have an eight years difference, yeah. and for my brother, ten years. Yeah. So when I was like five, six. My brother left to this school, you know, mm -hmm. and my sister also did college in Rio, like a really good college and stuff. Gotcha. So, but we had a big difference, yeah. you know, so I was like, kind of like alone, you yeah. know. So, they were more like uncles and aunts than, than yeah, brothers and sisters. You know, he used yeah. to come so only in the weekends. My brother was really close to my brother, so, but he yeah. used to only come in the weekends. My sister were doing college gotcha, and gotcha. like different times with a boyfriend. That was mm -hmm. a really nice guy that helped me a lot too when I was young. But like, you know what I mean? It was a different dynamic. Gotcha. So it was me and my mom. So at that, and she was like, all right, I want you out. Like, I want you to go because that's one of, one in a kind of opportunity, you know, like, especially if you can absolutely get like a, something. So that's how, how happened. This guy like started to. So what, so what school did you know? Like, where was the school in the United so States? I, so I did the whole process. I did the, uh -huh. like. And it took six months, like you said? Yeah. Kind a long time, took, man. Yeah, it's a wow. long time. Took kind of six months. And mm -hmm. I knew some guys that came before to Florida Memorial University. It's okay, right FMU. Now, okay, yeah. okay. So I, these guys came six months before. Okay. So I was kind of like more, you know, and this guy was like, he did, a, like, we did a good agreement with me and Amari, this guy, like, he always also bring another players with me and stuff, you know. So we did a good agreement. I said, like, okay, I, that I can do, you know, and my mom was, like, really, like, pushing me. Mm -hmm. So I, I dropped everything and I started to focus on that, you know, learn a little bit of my English, going practice and stuff, like, practicing, practice, practice. And were you practicing up by yourself or you had a trainer or no, a coach? No, I was practicing there on that, on their oh, on academy. The, yeah, oh, got it, got the, it. Where they okay. used to practice three times at the three times okay. I was playing pickup games. I was doing like everything to try to keep a, a better shape mm -hmm. because I, I, 
So I started to research and I started to talk with my friends and everybody saying like, oh my God, it's, it's tough. Like they, they really take serious over here. Like the, the finished part, like, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe on the technical part, you, you're gonna like, you, be you great, know, you're gonna yeah. be great. But in the, in the finished part, it's gonna be hard. They do a lot gotcha. of tests and stuff, even though it's like a small school, but yeah. they're still going through a lot, you know, like, so I'm this coach really wanted me to come. His name is Fernando Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And he really wanted me to come. He was Argentinian guy and he really wanted to, to recruit me so at that time he already told me like look you're gonna but the the school would only start in august and that okay. was january okay. so he said look come you're gonna okay. have full scholarship the only thing that nice. you need to 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 take care is gonna be your housing but these okay. guys were already living outside of the campus like six seven guys and it was like really cheap you know yeah. like apartment six seven Brazilians and stuff was cheap. Six, like seven was, and one apartment. How yeah, many rooms? Two rooms, three two. <laughs> rooms. After we moved to three rooms and it was like, my expenses in the beginning was like 250. Yeah. 250. Very minimal. Yeah. Yeah, very minimal. Like yeah. we have internet, we had mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, I had my cell phone and the, yeah. the expense Perfect. of the house, you know, like, and we're sharing everything. Yeah. So it's like 250 and something like that. And so he said, but come before, because first, December before I tried to do a test and my score was really low. So he said for English or just for English, or just as you, for, okay. for English because that's that was the minimum requirement to, right. for the NA. Like right. I had to to have the TOEFL for the school to to get like accepted for the school. And so what's I, the percentage of the grade or do you remember or too I long ago? Remember. Oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. I don't remember. It depends also for the school. Gotcha. Some schools gonna ask you for more. Other schools ah. gonna ask you for less. Okay. So let's say it was like the it was one hundred twenty. I know that that it's one twenty the maximum that you can get it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you need to get reach 60. That was the meet, like the meeting, like the, mm -hmm. at least the, you know, 50%, something like that. So gotcha. I was like, so he said, come to the US. I have like a summer team that you're going to practice and you're going to play on my summer team. We have, we always help the players with food and stuff. Not going to be really hard for you. Like, to, so you have like, you're going to all, most of the, it was like a PDL you know, like the summer league. Mm -hmm. Most of the players are from college. You're going to like meet everybody that's going to play with you. You're going to make friends. Yeah, you can it's bond gonna, a little bit. You're going to bond a little bit before classes because once classes get and you're not that good in English, is it going to be good for you if you have good friends that are going to help you, you True. know? Yep. And is, you're going to see how it is, you know, like how it is the U.S. and stuff. So I came in January with another guy. To, I, I started like an uh, uh, English course in a, a night in a public school and I was practicing during the day, you know? Nice. So I started to do that, doing both, both, and then start to play for him in the summer and I was doing good. So I was able finally to get everything set with the school, with, with test, no, Florida yeah. Memorial. And then they give me the acceptance letter. Awesome. So I went to Brazil back. I, I made an uh, appointment to get my, in the in the US in Paris, in how you say in embassy the, embassy embassy yeah to get my to get my visa yeah so after I went like another two weeks like what oh a my mission God, man <laughs> am, am I gonna make because I had everything already can you imagine I don't get a visa like oh my God so you need to get a lot of documents like that your mom are able or who else is gonna sponsor you mm -hmm. you need to take all of the like extracts and of her bank account you need to take like the oh. tax you need to take a lot of things that's gonna show that you're not gonna just come drop and start to work mm -hmm. or like take a different you know, right. I really had a, a college that I was come to play soccer. That's like, yeah. and that again, start to burn. The soccer part start to burn inside me. Like, oh my God, I'm going to go back to soccer. Like something that I really love. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like even though it's not like the highest of the highest in, yeah. in school, but you get to play I'm going to education. I'm going to at least have four more years of having fun playing soccer and I'm going to have my education in the US. And something you're, and you're that learning English, you know? Learning English. I like, I was like, I didn't even like, Never in my mind, I thought I was going to even finish college in Brazil. Right. I'm going to finish college like in the US. Like I was never, like, for me, it was never planned to stay. Isn't it funny how life works sometimes? <laughs> and yeah, now we stop and we think, you know, but yep. it's, it's crazy. And I never thought about like after finishing college staying. I was just thinking like, oh my God, I'm going to go there. I'm going to learn. I'm going to go back to Brazil. I'm going to 
ball in Brazil because I'm yeah. gonna have English. I'm gonna have like an international mm -hmm. degree. Yep. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be working. You're set, man. I'm gonna be working a good and a great company. I'm gonna be able to give like good life for my mom and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, I had a dreaming, you know. Yeah, that's it. And so that's it. I went to Brazil. I got accepted, and then in August of 2015, that was my first. You know, my first time, like I came in January, got back, nice. and then 2015 was finally I started school. Cool, in man. August. All right, so let's, let's talk about college. So compared to playing the way you played in Brazil, right, to playing somewhere more structured but not in your country, was there a big transition struggle there to like different f types of way to play soccer? Or For me, the biggest struggle was to balance again. What, education but, and soccer? And get a soul. Yeah. Sometimes... The first day, you had your group, but in the end of the season, it was everybody together. Nice. One of my best, like, good friends, too, like, Argentinians, Uruguay, like, everybody from, maybe mm. you think, like, oh, Brazil is not going to go good with Argentina, or you're mm. not going to go, you know? With you guys are a family. Bro, like, even everybody help each other outside of the field. Everybody help. Look, I need somebody to, to work here today. Need Look, you need, bro, like, he's really need help like he's not being able to to make to practice because he doesn't have a right mm -hmm. no i passed by i pick him up and it was a family because i really believe because of the things outside of the field you mm -hmm. know like inside the field he was not like oh like a, a, a X great, and O's guy. Uh, yeah. yeah who's like uh, average but gotcha. he's outside like the 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 person the bonds and the, the relationships bond that really creates even nowadays like mm -hmm. is was really was nice, really man. important for me Especially Amen. for us, the international, you know, like it's good to have friends and yeah, no, that's good, bro. Like the relationships you make in college or when you play in your sports, that's part of what it's all about. You know, you're making brotherhoods and friendships that would have never happened if you didn't play soccer, yeah. if you didn't love it as much as the next man. You know, so it's cool that those relationships can come out of something that you didn't even see coming mm -hmm. years prior. You know, so that's yeah. that's badass. All right, so you got your business degree. Oh, sorry. It's your senior year. You're thinking about going somewhere. Uh, senior year. Did you have preferences on where to go? Or you were just like, wherever I get the call, I'll go. Wherever I get the call. Okay. I was not that. I was, was Tulsa your I, first team? or I was in a small school, you know, like, mm -hmm. I was like, whatever, I have the opportunity. Right. At that time, I was already working. I was already, like, putting, you know, like, with my wife uh, living alone and stuff. She was working a really good company stuff. Mm -hmm. So... We said, like, you know what, like, if I have the opportunity, I think I'm going to I'm gonna go, go for, for it. it. Nice. Know, like, so in December, my coach called me and he, he asked me to come over. And he had, like, two letters from USL teams invite me for, for, for is it like tryouts. Is it like a workout or tryout? For okay. tryouts. Gotcha. You know, for doing, like, the preseason for them. Okay. They, they invite me for preseason, mm -hmm. but nothing guaranteed. You know, how long? So how long is that preseason? Like two weeks, four so weeks? So for now, for example, I'm getting the preseason. This year starts on first of February, and the first game starts on March 11. Okay. So it's gonna normally it's like one month. Gotcha. One month, like five. You weeks. got a month to make magic. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, all right, at least I have something on the table. And then in January, Amari comes and look, I I have like a contract for you. It's not a good one. I'm telling you from now. Right now, yeah. It's not a good one. Uh -huh. But at least you're going to have something. You know, like, mm -hmm. at that time, it was 2019, okay. January. And I was already, I was already, I was already, I married my wife when I was in, it was 2018. Okay. The beginning of the year. And I, I already applied for my green card and everything. And I was already with my permission for work. I had everything, you know. Yeah. I didn't have my green card, green card yet. I was just waiting for the, the, the interview. But I, I already had my social, I already had my permission for work, I, I already have everything. So I was like, ah, now it's hard because another decision that's gonna, gonna a be a big one. And I'm on my life, you know, like the decisions are always important. Like when you get in this point, like it was like, or you go to work. I was already working with friends, like I was <clears> coaching <throat> and I was looking at another opportunity to work because the practice was like a four, five, six at this time. I was looking at to do something in the morning to like, you know, to, get better to make more money and stuff i was like so now should i stay with like i have something here i'm and comfortable I, here I'm or should comfortable. i i was comfortable what i was making <clears throat> for my my life for me just me and my wife like minimum you know i was comfortable and i was living 
close to, to JCC. Yeah. I was comfortable there. She used to work on Gulfstream that was like five minutes away. Yeah. We were really comfortable, like weekends with family, you know, like having a good life. So I was like, and now put all of that on risk to go chase a dream because mm -hmm. it's all a dream, you know? Like, yep. And the contract that he gave me was like, terrible it was just for food they hadn't met apartment yeah. and stuff but it was just for food literally right. i was gonna I, that's how much i would spend in food mm -hmm. and but i still have like we had i had a car with my wife we had the apartment that I used to have yeah, you got still charges. three four months for the apartment yeah. renting we used to go 50 50 and everything you know like oh, yeah. even though she had a better job than me but we like we have family it. now we have yeah. now we're together like my money's yeah. your money and half, your money's yeah <laughs> that's it like and she knew like that she, we had you know, the struggle. So she's, she said, like, I think you should go. Like, you should give, like, at least one year off, like. Hey, your wife's you a real know? one, yeah. bro. A lot she of people like, would have yeah. told you, hey, stay in yeah. your comfort zone. Don't mess up a for sure thing so for a maybe. Down. We sit down and she said, like, okay. I said, like, you know what? Like, okay. We decide, like, we're going to take one year. Go, try one year. Okay. one year. If you make on the league, good. If you don't do nothing, you don't play and don't have time. At least you tried home. it. Even though, like in six months, if you're not playing, if you not have opportunities, you come back home and we go back, you know. So and the 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 rent was gonna expire, so she said like, "It's fine. I moved back to my mom's house. It's good. I'm gonna be saving money too. I'm gonna be here." And she just moved at that January. She moved to a really big company, really really nice opportunity that she could not just leave, you know, mm -hmm. because she we also need the money. You know, she was putting for us. Of course. She was passing on us. So yeah. she was like, I'm not going to move with you now. It's going to be hard. But she was, I'm going to go try to go every month. Yeah. And then Long I'm going to be saving me, the money over here. Mm -hmm. And we go, we're going to try, you know. So yeah. that's what we did. So he get, I signed that contract for one year, 2019. Mm -hmm. And I moved there to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And... How was that? Because going from Brazil to Miami, that's not that, that bad. Not that bad. But going from <laughs> Miami I'm gonna say, to Tulsa. I'm gonna say because like <laughs> Miami is like really like if you're not it's a from melting Miami, pot. Yeah. And it's, if you're not from Miami, a lot of people think, ah, good weather. People think about good weather, party, opportunity, mm -hmm. uh, different cultures. Yeah. Like you feel at home, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And over there was a little bit different. Cold. I got there. First day is no. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what are you doing no. I called my wife. I was like, no, I think I'm going to go back. No, 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 no we're going to be. I don't need a year. I just need a day. <laughs> You're not going to believe what's happening. She's like, what's happening? Chelsea, it's everything white outside. <laughs> everything white. I never saw. I was like, oh my God, no. So it was a really hard 2019. She was like going once a month. Yeah. You know, just like to see me and stuff. Like she'd stay just for like from Thursday to Sunday. And that's tough in the relationship, man. You it was, know, it was tough, but it was like, I think it was like, was important for us too. Of you know, gave us like a lot of nowadays, like it's not everything that, that breaks us, you know, it's yeah. not that everything that like, that makes us fire or have like a, a discussion and stuff like yep. these moments, I think like de really define us. Like we said before, you know, things yeah. that happen all the way there back define me, like how hard I work, how, like, you know, how everything's happened in my life. But, and this also happened with me and my wife, you know, in 2019 was like a hard year being out, like away from each other. Sure. But fortunately, I was able to, to do a really good year. Like I was, I make, I made second team of the league. Yes. I was, I made like 13 assists, nine goals. Like I was like a lot of people talking about me, like came from nowhere, like no school. They even did like a, a interview, you know, like from the USL, like website that I came from like nowhere you know yeah. like because everybody always looking for like the, the, the light talent. spots you're yeah. always looking for like the deal one the guy that came from mls that didn't have the opportunity we're gonna mm -hmm. recycle him to try to push him up yeah. you know and i came from nowhere and i was like even though the team didn't do good i did you really shined. good yeah you know i shine like so <clears throat> that's when the things change you know like yes. for the next year for 2020 i already signed two years like a, a better a, like a much better contract and did covid affect anything for your deals or soccer stuff or you were no, okay because i signed it before nice okay signed cool. Before, cool, cool cool and cool. we like in the end of 2019 mm -hmm. our club got bought what like three brothers they bought the club gotcha. i really like 
influence people in Oklahoma. Yeah. They bought the club. They really have like <clears throat> a really good project with the kids to grow the soccer in Oklahoma. They're really big already, but they-, they Seems like both of your journeys lined up at the same mm -hmm. time at a, at a good time, yeah. huh? And then I was doing really good. He said, look, we want you back. Like we're gonna really like, the coach was really nice too. He was like, we really want you back. Like cool. we're gonna do like, a, we're gonna make things like, great you know like everything's gonna be better the investment is gonna be much much better doesn't even compare you know like you're gonna make a good salary things gonna you know good for so, you man so that's when my wife like she she was already really stressed with that job like mm -hmm. you know it was something really good but was really stressful of course she used to drive from miami lakes to all the way to like to the port of miami oof it was like really long like my one mom hour my mom used to work at the port of miami when i was a kid it's a drive, man. If you come from that far, <laughs> that's a drive. She, like I told you, like we used to live five minutes away. Yeah. She used to, she used to five go to, to the gym before an work hour. and then go to work after that. So after traffic. she moved, she, her life changed, you know, like it was just work, work, work. I want, like for her, was, she adapted because I was not here too. Mm -hmm. So her life, uh, the social life was not like as important anymore. So she was just like work, working, work, working, and she was grinding, grinding, grinding. At the point that she's like, okay, I'm good. Like I, I we save enough and I can try something else, you know? Yeah. So that's when she, like in 2020, we, we went back to Tulsa together and we, I have been there since. That's amazing, bro. I love this yeah. story, man. So before we wrap up, man, so do you, if you can, I always like to ask this question. So if you can travel in time and talk back with a uh, younger Rodrigo, what would be uh, one or two pieces of advice you would give yourself? I feel that like, that things always gonna make a way. Sometimes like, your mind's like, there is no way that I can get out of this dark room. You know, like sometimes you think like, no, like now it's done. Like now it's impossible. Mm -hmm. The things are too, like, it's too mass, you know, like too many things happen in your head yeah. and that you can like understand like what is happening. You know, like, but in the end of the day, like, you're, you're going to pass through. That is, no matter what happened, you're going to pass through. You know, like, things sometimes suck. Sometimes, like, is with your, with your personal life. Sometimes in a job. Sometimes whatever you wanted to, to, to put it as an example, you can mm -hmm. use on this case. But it's going to pass. No matter what. Like, I passed through now, like, in 2000, on the COVID time. Yeah. My, I was really scared because my wife has like uh, respiratory problems and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I was scared about that. I was not doing a good year playing. Like with like I was scared to being back home and because we were traveling and give to her. So mm -hmm. we kind of like stay a little bit sometimes separate before getting the COVID test. And like it was a really tough year. Yeah. And and I was not doing good on the field. Yeah. So like again, like did I have what it takes to get out of this zone space and like go through and like and work you know and i went through like i did a great 2022 a 21 great 2022 because like i was able to like persevere you know like i really believe and like and i believe in god i believe that he's always with me and no matter what happened he's gonna be here and he's gonna help me pass through everything you know so i would tell me like that was the like i think like that's the only thing that i would tell me like it's gonna pass like no matter what message, happened, man. it's gonna pass Nice, man. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Rodrigo, for coming and sending your awesome story. You. Um, make sure, if you're not already, subscribe, like, and share, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Awesome, man.